Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I'm so very happy to have you here today. Let's get to DIY one. I started out with this picture that I got from Michaels. I don't know if you've been to Michaels lately, but they're getting a lot of their stock in slow duration. So they're just giving out boxes for like $5. So I want to say there was four to six of them in there. And they originally were $24.99 each, and I got $5 for the whole box. So nice purchase. Um, I painted that in Waverly's Chalk Paint and Plaster, and then I grabbed these furniture markers. A subscriber had told me about these, and oh, they work so nice since they're meant for furniture. They go on just about, you know, any surface really well. I apologize. I didn't want to focus there as well as my extra paints for my projects I've been working on. Um, I just went around any area that, you know, enamel may have been. So I was thinking of this as an old, you know, farmhouse picture that was maybe, maybe had enamel on it. And I was not precise because you may have some chipping here and there with enamel wear, as you know, and I'll even go put a couple spots where I think it may have been bumped and you can kind of see those ridges there. It was raised. I'm going to go back and put some of the black on there also. I thought that would give it a fun pop. On the next one, I don't know if I do that though. I... I don't know. I think that it turns out cute and gives me that great black and white effect. But I've got several others to play with. So do visit Michael's um, and watch for those $5 boxes. All right, just continuing to paint these. I did try at first taping it off, but going around this and the shape as it tapers, it really didn't work very well. So I was able to go back if needed, you know, with the marker and either expand my line or come back in with some plaster chalk paint. But again, you're going to make this your own. Um, I've also seen these in thrift stores as well as at Hobby Lobby. Um, I know that Hobby Lobby has them, you know, with their 40% off quite frequently. But I thought this would work well for just about any season. Just wanted to give this to different angles, um, the different ridges, and how I went about painting it. I will, of course, not make you watch the whole thing. I like to give you just little bits of what I'm doing and try to make each DIY five minutes or less. All right, here I'm coming in where it may have got bumped around, straightening up some lines. You can see there that I've added some chips here and there. All right, I hope you liked that one. I think it's fun. Not perfect, but it's fun. Let's get to DIY 2. I grabbed a few extras of these Christmas signs. I really like the ones that have this frame around it, and this one had the nice wood beads. This said farmhouse, right? So it does have a little bit of glitter on anything that was red, so I sanded that off. And now I'm coming back in with some of that Waverly plaster. That's one of my favorite chalk paints from Waverly because it's not that stark white. It's not quite ivory, which I do like ivory also. And I have the white. I've used all three, but I tend to go to this one because it gives you that happy medium. So just painting that in there and then let it dry. I went on my Cricut and from design bundles, I had gotten a farmhouse bundle and I thought this one was adorable. Faith, family, and farm. 
How cute is that? Pretty simple. You could also go in and, you know, print something out and use pencil or carbon paper on the other side. Now I just took some flowers from my stash. Actually, these are from one of the boxes from Michael's. One box had a bunch of flowers. So be on the lookout there. There is some awesome quality. Then this has a little bit of lavender. I'll talk about the playlist that, you know, this little farmhouse playlist that I hosted. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was incorporate lavender into at least one project. I put lavender in the picture and now I added a little bit of this. I want to say it's like baby lavender. Um, so just kind of putting this together to give this sign just a little more something. Let me know down in the comments box what you would have done to decorate this. Would you have thrown a ribbon on this? Would you have just left it plain? Would you have painted every other bead black? What would you have done? I think that there's so many ways to go with this. Also, grab the signs. I've seen them in all different sizes. There's some in the beach area. Grab some of those. Also, grab some of that fun beach stuff. I will be making some of those very soon, probably mid-May or so. All right, just finishing this up with some final touches. And here it is. As I mentioned, this is part of a playlist, Farm Fresh and Fabulous, with Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIY and Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun, and a playlist below, all Farm Fresh and Fabulous DIYs. So go down to the playlist, give them a thumbs up, and let them know I sent you. All right, DIY three. I started out with this cutting board. I'm sorry, I must have clipped it out. This is one of those wood cutting boards that had, you'll see it in a second, had the sign on the front for Easter. So I painted it in fawn. Then I came in with a little bit of hazelnut. Then I came in with a little bit of truffle. And now I'm just using a dry brush method and going back over it to give this a uh, faux wood finish. So keep layering just some different wood colors and just keep going back and forth. I'm sorry, my brush was dropping bristles here and there. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those chunky brushes. There's the front that I was talking about that I took that off. They're just attached to these faux cutting boards with tacks. So I took that off. Now I'm taking some black vinyl the Dollar Tree now does have the black vinyl, and I thought this would kind of look like a chalkboard. This was other vinyl I had, but I knew that you could get it, you know, at a cheap price. So I'm just covering that up. You could definitely paint that also, but I thought this would be a good way. Now to trim this off, I'm just using my file. Now watch, if I just go back and forth on the side like this, instead of going down like I was, comes off in a second. There is my furniture marker again, just taking care of my edges. So simple. Now you can see where those tacks were, and I was going to put them right back where they had them, but they weren't lined up straight. They were all off. So I decided I'm gonna just snip off the end of these tacks and one went flying and I didn't have time to track it down. So I grabbed another one, <laughs> snipped that off and I'm just kind of pressing it in there right now. And then I just add a dab of hot glue. Now I got this again from Oh, I think this was, yes, from Design Bundles. And I just trimmed off the rest of the measurements and just did some jars. So this would be, you know, how many pints in a quart, etc. But you could definitely do all the measurements on here. But I thought with this smaller sign 
that this one would be the best fit. And actually, I was just measuring between the tacks, so I probably could have done a little bit more, but I think this turns out really cute. And, you know, just, I thought this needed to scoot out just a little bit, that line from the jar. They had it really close to the edge, and I thought it would be cute just out a tiny bit. And if you haven't picked up those little weeding tools or paper piecing tools, I love those for my Cricut because you can use the backside to rub on your vinyl. Um, or, you know, you can also use the other end for weeding. And this was super simple. I barely rubbed it. I didn't use anything. I just used my hand to rub it on there and it came off so nice and easy. I have that vinyl linked below because I love the way, you know, it goes on, the way it cuts. Both that black and white are the same. And I will just cover this up with craft paper then. But that now you can see what it looked like. It was that faux board. I always grab a few extras when I see, you know, fun signs come out. Now, just adding some ribbon to embellish. Wrapped this ribbon around my fingers three times. Now I'm taking just a little bit of wire that I had handy and twist that around the center. And now I'll go back and just tie a piece of ribbon right around the center to make the tails on my bow. And I just snipped these off at an angle. So I think a cute another little black and white. I was kind of on a black and white motif for my farmhouse. I don't always do black and white for my farmhouse, but I, I don't know. That was my kick right now. And I'm just gonna put that up top. Now you could put a kickstand on the back of this. Um, I've used several different things, the tumbling tower blocks. You could um, pop apart clothes pins to make a kickstand. Um, several different ways to do that. But here it is. Does that not look like faux wood? I think it turned out cute. Okay, let's get to DIY four. I found this jar at the Dollar Tree and does it not look like a milk container? So back to my black marker. Okay, I do wanna let you guys know, as you probably noticed, um, I'm down to about one video a week. Um, I got COVID in March and I'm still struggling. I really don't have much energy. And going back in the doctor, see what else is up. See if, you know, I don't know, I've been anemic in the past and I want to just make sure to take care of me so that then I can take care of these for all of you. So I do apologize in advance if I don't get one out one week, but I'm really trying to take care of my health and get back on the right track. Okay, I just love this. I think it's such a cute way it can still be a candle, yet you could have it as on a tear tray as like a milk jar. I do hope though, if you're enjoying these, that that doesn't deter you from subscribing. I'd love you to be part of my friends and family. Okay, this is some of that floral wire that I just used. I just doubled it over and painted that black. Now, this label was not coming off. Had to use a heat gun. You could probably use a blow dryer. I do like this Goo Gone spray adhesive. It, it takes things off so nicely. It's a gel instead of the liquid, and it just does it so nice. Okay, back to my handles. Now, I just took a little piece of... This wasn't... Well, maybe it was a little bit of jute twine. Um, when I wrapped something else around, it was like a jute thinner twine maybe from an ornament, um, those little wood round ornaments. So that's what I would suggest, something nice and thin. So just wrapping that around the center, it just reminded me of the milk jugs that I saw out on our old family farm. 
Um, I think there's still a few of those around. It's kind of the family gathering place. So holds a little special place in my heart when I see like, you know, the metal milk jugs and things like that. Okay, now on the sides of these jars, there is a seam. So I just centered it um, over the seam so that the sides would be nice and blank. Now, you could also do a vinyl label on the jug. You know, I could put like Miller's Farm or, you know, something like that on here. Um, but I chose this time to just leave it blank. So it'll just kind of blend in with anything. And the hot glue worked just fine on here. I hope you've given me a thumbs up and that you remember that you remember to go to the playlist below as well as subscribe to those other co-hosts. They are fabulous ladies. We do um, uh, some sort of challenge each month on the first of every month. So it's always on the first. Well, we moved it to the first of every month at 5 p.m. Eastern. So yes do not forget to join us now i'm just taking a little bit more of that lavender and putting that on the center just giving this a little bit of something else there And then those leaves I snipped off, I thought, you know, that'll kind of cover nicely where I crossed the, the lavender. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but this silicone mat that I have underneath here, now I painted on there, um, hot glue comes off there. The silicone just works so well. I found the best thing to clean these mats is actually a wet wipe. Dishwater works well also, but the wet wipe has a little bit of texture and helps just move it off. But here is our final reveal here for the last one. Again, I hope that you enjoyed this and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me today. And here's a couple others that you might also enjoy. Thank you and have a blessed day.